procrastination got the best of me. Sunday afternoon, you'll be watching this Monday morning, and we're gonna answer your questions for you. We've got a bunch of questions that you guys sent in. So let's get started here with um, Mario Steins, I think. Mario Steins, 7821. He asks, have you ever had any blackout or other electrical system failure? says, thanks for the truckload of great ideas that we can use for our own projects. Greetings <laughs> from the Netherlands. Truckload. A truckload. I would say no, not really a failure, but in the winter time, usually in, um, see, December and January, when it's the darkest for the longest, we will run out of power every few days or so. And so we'll have to run the generator and charge up the batteries. But that's usually, it's not like a failure, it's my fault for not paying attention to the batteries. And so sometimes the power will go out unexpectedly because <laughs> I didn't check the batteries. I was actually in the shower. Oh yeah. When the power went out, fully wet and fully soaked up. So for me, that was the most inconvenient time. Inconvenient <laughs> time, yes. For the power to go out. And it was also very cold. But when we start up the generator, it transfers power from the generator to the house and charges the batteries at the same time. So the power was only out for a short period of time. Yeah, yep, just enough for you to go outside and get things taken <laughs> care of. Get it going. Huh? Yeah. So here's a question from Karen Phillips, 6801. Karen, asked a question for you, Seth. What is it? She said, Seth, decided where you're going to go to college. Martin. You've done a wonderful job with Sarah, oh, a wonderful job on Sarah and Colin's wedding. I haven't heard a preacher bring it out like that. <laughs> you know, me neither. I've never heard a preacher bring it out like that before either. And so <laughs> thank you for your comments. But Seth, you have an answer for him? Most likely I'll be going to Freed, but right now I'm still open to ideas. <laughs> All right. So if you have any ideas for him, put them down in the comments below. If you didn't hear him, he said Freed. That means Freed Hardeman University. It's in Tennessee. That's where Sarah's going. That's Colin, where I went. Colin got And Colin went. too. Yeah. So um, it's kind of maybe becoming a family tradition. The next question comes in from Jen's Adventure 84. And uh, she says she hasn't had time to go back and watch all of the videos, but she's wondering what our main motivation for off-grid life was and um, have our goals and motivations changed over time. Now we did a video about going off grid a long time ago and I don't even remember what, what I said, said in it. <laughs> like man, what was our main motivation for going off grid? I think for me part of it is just being in control of your own power, you know, and your own water and all of that. Not being uh, completely reliant on other people to provide those things for you. And so that's probably a big motivation for me. Do you have any? Not really. I think just learning how to do things. Yeah. You know, learning, kind of going back to some of the basics. Right. And um, understanding, you know, how to produce your own food and learning all those skills, how to preserve food, learning those skills. Cool. And also for me, I guess too, part is just the fun of figuring, figuring things out, like figuring out how the power system works, figuring out how the solar works and and just having to work through that rather than just flipping a switch and everything works, you know? Mm -hmm. So the fun of it and the independence of it. Good question there, Jen's Adventure 84. The next question comes in from um, Susan Sherrock, 9253. And she asks, um, do you think that building your own house uh, gives Seth a good work ethic? I'd say definitely. I mean, during the summers, it's pretty much a full-time job every day. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think doing that, you know, builds a lot of skills as well and um, skills that you'll have for the rest of your life. Definitely. Right? But the work ethic part, I think, could, could happen with any type of thing that you do as a family. Yeah. It doesn't have to be building your own house. You know, it's, it's going to be more how the parents train the child more than whatever the project is in and of itself. Yeah, because like the ethic part of it. Whoa, oh, careful buddy. there, buddy. Hey, why aren't you wearing a seatbelt? People want to know. <laughs> Come on, sit down. Yeah, the ethic part of it, I think, is just, you know, like, are you dependable? Are you doing what you say you're going to do when you, you know, and being reliable? Yeah. Um, keeping your promises, doing things on time. I think that's the ethic part, no matter 
no matter what the job actually ends up being. Right. So don't think that you have to build your own house <laughs> to give your children a good work ethic. Let's go ahead and take a break for our sponsor and then we'll get right back into answering questions. Have you guys seen that um, graphic that's from the uh, National Weather Service place? Right, they got a map of the United States of the 2020 billion dollar climate catastrophes. It's interesting, the whole like Southeast was inundated with hurricanes, tornadoes, um, flooding, and then you go up a little bit north right there and you've got um, severe weather, you know, winter storms and such. Out in the Midwest, there's droughts. <sighs> in the West, right? Forest fires, of course, like every single year. You know, and all of those things, they cause problems to the grid, right? They cause emergency situations for a lot of people. And I know that, that some of you guys right now are dealing with severe heat waves across the country. Check this out, man. Oh, yes. Ah, it is nice and frosty cool in here. Uh, it's like a little... It's like a little walk-in cooler because we've got the air conditioner set to 62 degrees so that it will never go off. But how are we powering it? We're powering it right here with the Delta II Max and the additional battery backup for it. These are a couple of the units that EcoFlow sells. They've got a, a whole bunch of different sizes to meet your needs. But you know what's really important is, is that when the power goes out, you need a backup power solution. EcoFlow can do that. But the problem is guys, when the power is out and you can't charge this off of the wall, how are you gonna charge it? Ooh, dun, 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 solar panels. But the problem is, this is the solar panel cord. It's like eight feet long. Tell me now, how am I gonna get an eight foot cord from here up out that window and all the way out to these panels so that they can be in the sun? I'm not gonna do it with this. Let me show you the fix. So this is actually gonna be a pretty easy fix. All you need is a chunk of cable right here, suitable cable. This is actually 12 gauge cable, which is gonna be plenty enough. It'll do 20 amps. On the EcoFlow, you can only put 15 amps into it, so no problem. Then you need one of these cool little kits right here, these MC4 connector kits. And you need, of course, the MC4 connectors. So, let's go ahead and build ourselves an extension cord. First things first, let's get these cords out the window. And then I'll show you how we hook them up to the unit here. Feels so good right in front of the air conditioner. But so we just take our adapter cables here that we can actually plug right into the unit. We plug those into our extension cord. All right, let's plug them in here and see what happens. Plugged in. All right, let's go hook up the solar panels. This is a 275 watt panel, and this is an EcoFlow 220 watt panel. We're gonna hook one panel up to each leg of the uh, MPPT charge controller and see if we can get them both to work. All right, we should be making power now. Let's go find out. So let's take a look at what we've got going on here right now. We've got an input of 124 watts up here and we've got an input of 399 watts right there. 
You can also check how much power you're making and using right here on the app. So right now we're putting in about, what, 525 watts, 523 watts, somewhere right around there. Because the room's down to temperature, the compressor shut off and we're only pulling 168 watts right now. So we're actually charging the batteries while we're keeping the room cool. We could potentially run this air conditioner and keep this room cool indefinitely as long as there's sun every day. Now, of course, we only have two solar panels out there. You can add solar panels to it to get up to the maximum amount that you can put into this unit. All of the units are a little bit different. You wanna check the specs for the unit that you have or one that you're looking at getting to make sure that you don't put too much power coming into it. Make sure you follow the manufacturer's instructions on that. And EcoFlow makes a wide variety of highly reliable products with a five-year warranty. And that, guys, is why I am proud to have them sponsor this video that helps us continue to make free content for you and continue to build up the homestead. With the right combination of products, you can get up to 25,000 watt hours of reliable backup power for your home. And their units can power 99% of your home appliances. This is a really cool feature that I need to read to you because I don't want to mess it up. Reliable disaster care with 24 seven guardian support. Enjoy 24 seven online disaster guard customer service. EcoFlow is always here to provide assistance and guidance to our customers in times of need. Uh, it goes on to say together with a 45 day, no reason return and free product repair. You can use their product for 45 days, right? And then return it if you want. It's amazing. It says EcoFlow provides online and offline pickup service within 24 hours. That's available in California, Florida, Texas, Georgia, New Jersey. And it says that EcoFlow products are available now at Sam's Club, Home Depot, Harbor Freight, REI, and BBY. I'm not sure what BBY is. I don't think they have them here in Idaho. But seriously, if you were concerned about not having power when the power goes out, check out EcoFlow. There is a link down in the description below. Right now, you can get up to $1,499 off. You can get an additional discount if you use my coupon code. They've got some other special little things for you as well. There is a link down in the description below. Go ahead, check it out. And once again, thank you, EcoFlow, for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to work. Andy CS149 asks, have you thought about your own food prep facilities such as freeze drying, hydrating, etc. with all of that garden space you could grow and harvest a lot and use your and use your own Thrive Life food? Yeah, we I mean we've thought about it. Yeah, we've got some canning. Yeah. Um, we haven't really shown that I don't think in any of the videos really, but yeah, we've done uh, pressure canning and water bath canning. You've actually dehydrated yeah. uh, jerky and tomatoes. I, I think, think tomatoes, yeah, <laughs> tomatoes, uh-huh. Yeah, yep. some of the things like that we've done, we haven't shown in videos, but maybe in future videos we can show things like that. We don't have a freeze dryer. Mm -hmm. um, it would be kind of neat to have one. It just, freeze dryers take a long time to freeze dry, and they're pretty small on how much you can do. And I'm not 100% sure on this, but I think they take quite a bit of power. Mm -hmm. But during harvest time, be, you have a lot of sun. Good. So yeah, it's not like you're freeze drying in the middle of winter. Right. We'll have to give it a try and look into it more. Thanks yeah. for the idea there, Andy. William Tony dash BB8TX asks, is there a platform to see you preaching? If not, that would be awesome. And uh, you can see us very soon on our new YouTube channel. It will be a Bible-based YouTube channel. We'll be talking about all types of biblical topics likely a podcast to go along with that as well but that'll be coming out pretty soon so if you'd like to be notified when that actually goes live there is a link down in the description below you can click and sign up to be notified as soon as we start publishing videos on there it'll be lord willing this month <laughs> c faulkner one has a very similar question he says i'd like to know more about your faith and the new channel, like what kind of content we can expect and other possible 
uh, some of the possible topics and things like that. So, uh, yeah, you'll learn all about our faith and that on the new channel that's coming out. Uh, if you want to be notified about that, like I said, there's a link down in the, the description below. But um, some of the main topics, uh, I'm planning once a week to answer a, a big question that, uh, you know, one big religious question, kind of like, you know, what's the purpose of baptism? Who should be baptized? Uh, how to be saved? How often should you take the Lord's Supper? What are the qualifications for a pastor? Who can be a preacher? The different things like that, right? And so uh, some of those will be audience-driven questions. Then they'll also be most likely uh, more of an in-depth teaching once a week as well, which will be like, say, teaching through the Sermon on the Mount, right? And that will probably be in a video podcast form, much longer content, maybe 30 or 40 minutes per episode on the more in-depth ones. The other ones, just as long as it takes to answer the question, five or 10 minutes or so, something like that. That's what the new channel is gonna be about and some of the topics that'll be covered. And then more immediately, since that's not available, oh, yeah. on our website, downtoearthhomesteaders.com, you can um, find the resource page that has spiritual resources right. that we've listed out there with different links. I think it's up at the top, there's like a tab, resources, and then find spiritual resources underneath that tab. So let's see here. Anchor Down Homestead asks, how many times have you washed your hat or do you have a huge connex full of the same hat? <laughs> that would be cool. <laughs> that would be cool. Uh, I've washed it a few times. I think I've gone through three of the Idaho hats. Like, I think I'm on my third one right now. They get really dirty. Yeah, they get super dirty for sure, especially in the summertime. Mm -hmm. But um, kind of what basically what I do is I have I have a work hat and a town hat. <laughs> And then when the work hat gets so dirty that it's it's just too gross and you can't wash it anymore, then the town hat becomes the work hat and then I buy a new a hat. New yeah, I try to buy a new one for my new town hat. We'll Although use... they've been short on hats lately. Yeah. So I've been having to suffer through with a stinky work hat. We've used um, hydrogen peroxide, yep. right? To try to get the stuff out. Yeah, so far the best thing has been Putting it in the dishwasher. Yeah, it works out pretty yeah, good. Yeah, it works all right. My SWAT team asks, when you were putting up the trusses, it was raining. Did you have a waterproof coating applied to the floor OB OSB to, uh, to keep it from getting damaged? We did, we had it painted. Um, we put it down and then we painted it. Yeah, just a regular old deck paint. And um, But you really don't have to because that flooring is rated to be exposed to the weather for a certain period of time. and and a couple rains on it's not gonna hurt it. But we, we painted it because we knew that it was gonna be a long time until we actually put flooring on it. So that way, when we were living in the house, it would be, um, Just extra yeah, protected. it would be a little extra protected. Yeah. Wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't get slivers on it because we put it on really thick or slivers in your feet, stuff like that. So just to make it look a little bit nicer as well when we were living in there without flooring. Which it was our flooring for a long time. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was like, years. David Hagrid one asks, uh, what project are you most proud of? I think I'm most proud of our project, Sarah and Seth. Yeah, <laughs> me too. I know that's not what you're asking, so let's think. What's a project that we're most proud of? Man, maybe, I, mean, I don't know. I mean, the whole thing is just, the whole thing has been good. Mm -hmm. Maybe the solar system, because it's kind of like its own independent project. Maybe I could say that. What about you? You got any ideas? Mm -mm. No? No. We're kind of proud of the inside. It looks so good. Like the whole great room. Yeah. I Am Them asks, would you mind discussing how you found land in Idaho and what the cost of the land was itself? Mm. We looked online. We had a couple different states that we were looking at and Idaho was one of them, North Idaho specifically. And so we were looking online and uh, I saw a property there and then there was a link to email the realtor who listed it. So I emailed him and he turned out to be a really nice guy. And then we drove up to Idaho and we started looking at property and he helped us. He gave us a big list, the MLS list of properties that were available. Every day we went out and we drove around looking at properties for a couple <laughs> weeks, you know? We drove around and then walked out all the properties. Yeah, walked them all. Then we picked one that we liked and we made an offer on it and they accepted it and we bought it. 
that's kind of the, the simple part. It's just normal, you know? It wasn't anything out of the ordinary that we did to find that property. Um, how much was it? It was $60,000 for seven acres. That was back in 2018. Yeah, in 2018. I highly doubt you would find it for that price now. Yeah. Prices have really gone up a lot. Robert GN7QM asks, what are your plans for starting the workshop and will we be seeing plans on its design? We might start it in the spring. We have a we have a lot a lot of work that's going to get us through the winter just on the house. Maybe next spring we'll start it. And will you see any plans on it? I doubt it. I think we're just going to do it from our brain. Maybe it'll be 40 by 60 or maybe 30 by 50. I don't really know what size it's going to be yet, but it'll be significant and. I think I could just do it from my brain. The Green Knight asks, how big is the wood pile going to be? The wood pile, well, I'm guessing the wood shed. Like the wood in the wood shed is what I'm guessing okay. for the wood pile. It is as big as it's going to be this year. And it's about eight quarts of wood in the wood shed. Maybe it means what are the dimensions of the shed? Hmm. I don't know. What are the dimensions of the shed? 12 by 16, maybe? We have a video about it. <laughs> yeah. If you go back last to last summer. summer when we built it, you can see how we built it and all of that. If I'm mispronouncing your name here, I apologize, but it looks like it's Lucinisi3922 asks, how are your batteries holding up your day-to-day -day loads and um, do you run them down and then need the Jenny to top them up? They do great in the spring, summer, and fall, but in the winter time, mm, yeah, we gotta top them up with the Jenny. Where do they say Jenny at? I think <laughs> I hear that from Canadian vloggers. So maybe maybe you're in Canada. I don't know, but I don't I don't call it a Jenny. Although I really like that name. We call it a generator. You're um, not as cool. Huh? You're not as cool. Me? I'm not as cool. I know I'm not as cool. I don't I don't use the cool Jenny word. <laughs> Got to get out the Jenny. John Parker seven zero nine two asks. Sarah just got married. Seth will be going to college soon. My question is. What are y'all planning to do with all that space? Will you be renting out the apartment over the garage for rental income? Now, the original plan was not to rent it out. <clears throat> we may possibly do an Airbnb on it just as an experiment to test it out and see if we like it. But originally it was just gonna be for guests and um, Sarah and Colin hopefully will be renting that next year anyway. So probably in about nine months or so they'll be moving up to Idaho. As far as the rest of the space goes, we built the house to be able to host people. And so the plan is, is to have it full of people very often. YOGym3994 asks, will the new shop be a barn as well? Any plans for animals? Plan is that part of it will be used like a barn. We're thinking that it will be the main shop and then two lead twos off of each side or a lead two off of each side. One side be to be able to park the camp trailer under and the tractor and the other side to be used for animals and food storage for them. There is a plan for animals in the future. What animals exactly? I'm not sure. You got any, any dreams of animals that you would like to have on the homestead? I think pigs. You want pigs, huh? Yeah, because I like bacon. <laughs> All right, Jules wants pigs and baby goats. Well, I like pigs. That you can put in a blanket or in uh, pajamas. Yeah, that's just for fun. Um, I wouldn't mind like raising a goat or two to butcher and a sheep or two to butcher. And Jules wants pigs, so maybe a pig or two to butcher. And then kind of see which ones we like to raise and which ones we, we enjoy the most. And then kind of focus in on that one. So try a variety of them and then be able to focus in on the ones that we really like. Kveld732 asks, uh, what did you use for homeschool resources? Oh. That's your question. <laughs> well, we have a whole blog post about that. You can see exactly what we use to homeschool. Yeah, with Sarah links to resources and yeah. all that too. Mm -hmm. So it's spelled out grade by grade. And we'll put that link in the description of the yeah. video. Yeah, we'll put links to a bunch of different videos and resources and stuff down in the description below to some of the answers that we've given so far. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That'll give you more information about it. And it would take a, take me a long time to explain everything that we use. So it'd be easier for me just to share with you the resource and, uh, or the website. And you can go through at your leisure. <laughs> but, but a lot of different stuff. And, and they both done very well academically. Um, on their ACT scores were excellent for both Sarah and Seth. And so 
They've had a good a good education academically. Nolan Bozier, 3153, asks a question that has been asked a lot and I completely understand why. Uh, says, I watched your videos, sent your trip out to the property. There was a young lady with you. <laughs> I always thought she was your daughter, but I haven't seen her since. May I ask That's who funny. she was? That's Brittany. That yeah, was Brittany, yeah. She was, Brittany. Yeah, she was a friend of ours. She's not related at all. No, just a friend. She was out for the summer and helping us out and staying with us for the summer. She had just graduated school and she had her summer before she started her next, you know, stage in life. And so she came out and helped us out that summer. So. Yep. Just a friend. But she's in all of our beginning videos, so. Yeah. I know. She's a hard worker, too. Yep. Andy Zwieg asks, um, do you use the Victron Auto Generator Start? And what about AC? We don't use the Victron Automatic Generator Start because our generator doesn't have an electric starter on it. You have to, like, pull the cord to start it. But if we did have one that we could use the automatic start with, I would for sure, because that would be very convenient. And what about AC? Well, you saw earlier when uh, in the sponsor, we were running our air conditioner with the uh, EcoFlow unit. So we could run that all day, either with the EcoFlow or plugged into the wall and run it off of our main solar system. We also have an air conditioner upstairs in the loft that we can use if um, in the evening, say we're watching a movie and it's hot up there, we can run that but it doesn't get super hot where we live for very long during the summer. And so air conditioning is not really necessary, mm -hmm. although it is nice sometimes. Yeah, and it does cool off in the evening and yeah. into the, you know, at night. So we can just open up the windows. Yeah, open the windows, turn on the fan, and it's, it's usually nice by the time you want to go to bed. Sometimes just, you know, in the evening before, after dinner and before bed, it can be a little warm in the house. Yeah. But, I mean, when I say a little warm, it's like, Probably just being babies. It's not really that hot. <laughs> Google user 8235 asks, how much money did your drywall cost that you paid to have done? $12,000, I think? I forget exactly. We paid to have the drywall in the main house done. We did all the drywall in the apartment, but for the main house last winter, we had yeah. that done. Yeah, and so we uh, paid like a supplies, you know, so we could yeah. gather supplies. Then after it was hung? Yeah, I think after it was hung and, and then, then after and it was completely done. Yeah, once it was textured. Texture, yeah. Seems like it was maybe around 12. I think it was around 12. Yeah. Anyway, somewhere around there. We thank you guys so much for submitting all of those questions and uh, sitting back with us while we drive and answer your questions. Yeah. Hang out with us a little bit. Just hang out. If you have any other questions that you'd like to ask, go ahead and put them down in the comments below and we'll try to get to them in future videos as time permits. Don't forget there is a lot of links in the description below that you can check out on various topics that we talked about in today's video. Hope you guys have a really great day. Keep, Keep smiling. smiling.